Hello, welcome to another edition of Kraken Cryptic. Um, today we're going to take a look at a, uh, a Sudoku that um, one of the followers on Twitter has uh, asked us to look at from the point of view of whether, whether using Snyder notation we can make progress from, from this position. Um, and I think I've accurately recorded here um, where the solver got to and our task is to is to move it forward. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we get into the solve here. The first is sort of, you know, uh, Mark and I, what, what is our history in Sudoku? We are speed solvers, I guess, and um, that's always what we strive to do. And therefore, some of the very advanced logical techniques that are, they're, they're fascinating, and we, we enjoy finding them in these puzzles, they aren't necessarily going to be the things that we are first, first looking for. What we've always looked for first and foremost is how do we get a solution as quickly as we possibly can. And one of the great things about doing this video series is that um, actually it forces us to pause a bit. It forces us to stop, take stock and actually try and work through logically how to get the answers out of these puzzles. But for that, for the reason, if you like, what's in our DNA, um, you know some of the things that we do or we may have done in the past like forcing solutions by bifurcation um, that you know it's not going to be particularly uh, enjoyable to watch you know somebody basically guess and then you know fill in a whole load of things in pencil and, uh, and see if it works or not so that's not what we're going to be trying to do in the video series generally although occasionally you may um, you know we may do a speed solve which you know, give you the opportunity to compare how fast you are um, to how fast we are. Um, the second thing, just to talk about briefly in, in relation to Snyder notation, is one of the reasons that we like it is because of the reasons I've just discussed about our DNA when it comes to solving these puzzles. Snyder notation is a lovely and um, efficient form of notation that allows you to make some quite useful deductions quite quickly um, and it can find some really beautiful logic on occasion. Um, but what it won't be is sort of um, a panacea. It's not going to solve every single puzzle. It's not always going to give you what you need, especially if you're looking to force logical solutions out. Now, one of the reasons it's nice is because you can get to a position like this, and if you spend you know a minute on it and you just can't see anything, it gives you lots of opportunities to pick where you might bifurcate. So you might bifurcate, you know, with this five seven pairing because you know it's going to give you two numbers, or this two four combination here also looks quite interesting. Um, and you know, you can then you can quickly bifurcate, switch to pencil, try and force a contradiction, and move forward that way. And therefore, you know, it's it's a very good way of approaching speed solving for puzzles. Um, but for difficult end games, especially if you're trying to find logic, um, it's not always going to be the right thing to do. And you know, there's been a couple of comments on the on the on the channel recently to say, well, you know, if you've listed every single possibility for the open cells, um, you could have solved this very quickly. You know, um, uh, simply by looking at, you know hidden subsets or whatever it might be and I'm sure that's that's absolutely true but let me tell you if you're in a room full of speed solving uh, fiends trying to get a super fiendish done in two minutes flat you do not have time to write down in every box all of the possibilities um, and and therefore that's not something that we've, we've tended to do. Now how do you make progress with this particular puzzle? Well I think once you sort of run out of obvious Snyder notation, I mean, the only thing I've spotted that you could possibly see here is, I think if you're looking at where nines can go in this top row, I think you could legitimately do this, put in two nines here, because you can see there's nine here, a nine here, and a nine here. So the nines in row one are forced over into this area of the, uh, the grid. Um, but other than that, I think you're, you're, you're reduced really to using standard techniques and then just trying to uh, think around the problem. When I say standard techniques, look for rows and columns or boxes that contain 
a lot of digits already and take a look at them and see what you can spot. Now, in doing that, one of the things I think is a useful tip is to try and pick rows and columns to concentrate on where they are, you know, some of the more unusual numbers are already given. So here, um, I'm not too sure that, you know, looking at rows and columns containing sevens, for example, is going to be that useful. I mean, you can take a look at, like, maybe have a look at the bottom row of the grid. You can see you need to place one, two, four, six, and eight. And, you know, it's a, you can see this would be a double square, and that would be a one and an eight square. But other than that, it, it's not going to yield anything terribly helpful. So my eyes were drawn to the right-hand side of the grid here. Um, you know, the, the, the fact is we haven't resolved a lot of the fours yet. We haven't resolved a lot of the, um, the eights, or it, that's what it felt to me like, or the threes. And therefore, you know, the fact that we had these are resolved in this column makes this an interesting column to look at because the open numbers, which are going to be 1, 2, 5, 7, and 9, I know I'm going to get a lot of uh, feedback from the grid in terms of those numbers because the, the grid's chock full of sevens already, for example. So if you do look at this column, what can we find? Well, as I say, we're looking for 1, 2, 5, 7, and 9. And there's a very interesting little thing you can spot here. So you've got the 2 and the 7 here already in this box. But look, there's a 5 here and a 5 here as well. So three of the numbers that you're looking for in column 9 are used up in this square and this square. So all you're left with is the possibility for this square and this square is actually a 1, 9 combination like this. Now from the work we did at the very start where I noticed that the 9s have to be shuffled over onto this side of the grid, you can immediately see that because the 9 has to be either here or here, and this is a 1, 9 double, this has to be a 9. So we could write in a 9 here, like this, and then we can also write in a, write in a 1. Um, now, you can see immediately going over and using the Snyder notation here, we can immediately write in another 1 over on the left hand side of the grid. And now I think we'll be able to make a bit more progress um, towards a solution. So let's just see how we go. Uh, this, this 9 now is forcing, look, we can force uh, Schneider 9s into, into these two positions. Let's place another 9 here. Oh, we can do the same with the threes. There you go. And that's probably going to be the uh, the clincher. So now you can see. Um, that means we've got the six here, the nines. Uh, so if we now if we now look at second row of the grid, we've now got, essentially, we've got five numbers given. We're looking for two, four, six, and eight. And look here, this now has to be an eight. Oops. Eight, um, which is very nice. So that resolves these two things here. This is now three, six in some combination. And that's going to fill in this. And I think from here, I'd be very surprised Well. I'm Pretty certain that the, the, the puzzle's now solved. This three nine is going to resolve this three six, and it will collapse. So that's um, that's how I think you could finish this in a reasonably efficient, logical way. Um, and we'll be back with more of these videos soon. So if you enjoy them, please do like them. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please follow us on Twitter. Um, as you can see, it's uh, if you get stuck on a puzzle, we're very happy to help. And um, thanks for watching.